Hello, my dear students and friends. Today we are going to learn finite automata from theoretical computer science. And the topics which we are going to learn are introduction to finite automata, then we'll see applications of FA, and finally we'll see the DFA means what. Let's start with the first point, introduction to finite automata. Here, this finite automata is also known as finite state machine. Then I'd like to ask that, what is exactly this machine? <coughs> you must have seen machines around you and this every machine has a physical existence and some common principle on which it works. So what is the common structure of the machine? Your machine is your processing unit, which takes some input and produces the desired output. For example, if we take a real life example of refrigerator, then your refrigerator is your processing unit. And if I'll give a glass of water as an input and we'll keep it for three hours, then after three hours, we'll get a glass of ice as an output. So between these three hours, your refrigerator has done some kind of processing on your water and produces the glass of ice as your output. So this is a common principle and common structure for every machine around us. That is input processing unit and then output. So now moving ahead, we'll see FA is a machine. Now here, that have you ever seen this kind of machine? No, like your physical machine, no. So I have to make the statement more better by adding one important word that is finite automata is an abstract machine. That is, it has a logical existence and logical structure. Therefore, we can say that an automata is an abstract model of digital computer or my FSM is a mathematical model for actual physical process. Now let's see the applications of this FA, where we can use it. It is commonly used in text editors. Then it is used in implementation for spell checker. If you have observed in Microsoft Office, if we write a wrong spelling, then it mark the underline below that wrong word such kind of spell checking is available or possible with the FA, then <clears throat> you can use it in pattern matching and string matching. We are using email IDs. Email ID has a specific pattern that is username, at the rate, domain name. And if you will skip that at the rate, then it will not accept your email as a valid address. So this kind of pattern recognition or string matching is possible with the help of FA. Then it is also useful or used in designing of digital circuits. Then it is the most important uses. It is used in lexical analysis of compiler. We have a complete chapter on lexical analysis in next semester. Then it is also used in communication protocol for information exchange. So these are some applications which I have listed here. Now we'll see that <coughs> what is mean by DFA. This DFA is an abbreviation for deterministic finite automata. The word automata specifies the things can be done automatically, where finite specifies the limit, that is it should be countable. Deterministic specifies that we can predict or we can determine the output. Now we'll see the formal definition of DFA, which is very important for us. Let's see. An automata can be represented by a five tuple Q, Sigma, Delta, Q, zero, F. All these five notations are very important. Each has some meaning and purpose. So let's see one by one. Q is a finite set of states. Your state represents or your state gives you a progress of your automata. Then we have a sigma. It is nothing but a finite set of symbols. 
which travels from one state to other state. Then third one is delta. It is known as a transition function, which is written as in an equation of Q cross sigma gives us Q. That is every symbol is associated with your every state and it returns you the some other state. <coughs> then we have Q0. It is an initial state from where any input is processed. That is, it is the starting point of your automata. Then F is a set of final state or states and it is a subset from your Q. So these five points are very important for us while looking at what is DFA. So now let's see how to draw this DFA. To draw this DFA, we need some notations. So what are those notations? Let's see one by one. The first one is a circle and it is used to denote the non-final state of your automata. Then we have a double circle double circle which is used to denote the final state of automata where your language or where your string can be accepted then we have arrow it is used to denote the transition of a state and then we have self loop which indicates that the transition is for self state so these are the four notations which we are going to use to draw your dfa graph now let's see the rules for DFA graph, which we have to recall while designing your DFA. So the first one is initial state is marked as Q0, like this Q0 starting state. Then each state has only one transition for each input symbol, means that from every state, you can draw only one transition for your every symbol. Then there may be one or more final states in your DFA. And the last is very important. DFA moves only in forward direction. Now next, some important point which we have to note. Null, that is epsilon move, is not allowed in DFA. That is, you cannot change the state of DFA without reading any input character. Agar aapko koi bhi character read karna hai aur kar rahe ho, to aapki state change ho jayegi aur aap koi bhi epsilon move nahi kar sakte ho. Yane ki null move is not allowed in DFA. And the last one is, for single language, more than one DFA can exist. And we prefer normally the DFA with minimum number of states. Now let's moving ahead, we'll see the one smallest example of DFA. Draw DFA to read string J. As here they have not given us any alphabet set, we'll consider that we have an alphabet set which contains only the symbol J. Now how to draw the DFA for this? Let's start with the initial state, that is Q0. From this Q0, we'll read our string J, and now we'll reach to the new state, that is Q1. When we'll reach to Q1, we have read the input symbol J. So can I accept my string here? Yes. So we'll make this Q1 as our final state. And at it, it only reads the string J, we can accept it at the state Q1. So in this DFA, Q0 is my initial and non-final state, whereas Q1 is my final state. So today we'll learn only this much. In next video, we'll see some more examples on DFA. Thank you so much for watching my video.